the malware uh, picture, um, uh, last time we covered the uh, malware types, and uh, we still have two uh, parts, which are uh, uh, malware uh, detection by antiviruses and how antiviruses uh, work. Okay, and the last thing is about uh, social engineering because it's uh, uh, it is uh, very related to uh, to malware. Um, so antiviruses. Uh, there are several um, any, uh, advances in uh, antivirus technology. So uh, if we think about the very old uh, way of detecting malware, what is the very simple way to detect malware. The presence of a certain malware. Signature. Signature. Basically, it's signature based. So, for every malware, there will be a signature. Okay? And uh, you will have a, a bank, a database of signature. And you have a new malware, or you have a, a file that you want to scan uh, through that uh, antivirus. You will compare that file with the signature you have. And if you notice, uh, any uh, similarity? Um, that's it. So uh, yeah, it's a signature scanner. So now, how the signature is uh, represented? How the signature is represented? Okay. Let's say you have you have a new uh, uh, virus. You know that there is a virus which is which is new, just appeared in the, in the wild. Okay. And how you extract the signature? Not the No, not the When we say signature. It's not behavior. It is yeah, one of the techniques is the hash. Compute the hash, okay, and store the hash. And any new file coming, new executable, to check if it is, uh, yeah, uh, uh, if it is malicious, if it is uh, uh, yeah, known in the, uh, in the database of uh, viruses, you will compute its hash and compare. So hash based. But the problem with hash based is that. If the new executable is any yani, one bit different from the uh, the signature, it will not work. Okay, it will yani, uh, uh, hash based signature is one way of uh, storing uh, signature. Sometimes it's just uh, we, yani, we know that all these uh, family of viruses they always start by a sequence of bytes, or at some offset of the executable there is a sequence of bytes, so string based basically. Okay. So signature-based detection is very uh, simple, and also in terms of um, efficiency, if your database becomes very large, you will have a uh, problem with uh, with uh, yeah, with signature-based uh, uh, detection. Now uh, we have normally there are uh, three three uh, types of antiviruses: signature-based. Now heuristics. Identity actions, yeah, heuristics and identity actions, they might be uh, described as um, it is behavioral based. Okay, you have uh, an antivirus, it needs to detect infections in the, uh, in the machine, so it will use uh, a behavioral based technique, meaning what? It will, it will wait until the virus starts or the malware starts executing. And when it executes, it has particular any resources that will access particular resources that will that, that will change, and the antivirus will keep watching those those resources. Okay, and it has it defines a kind of uh, um, a malicious behavior. It has a definition of what what is a malicious behavior. For example, it keeps watching the uh, system files. Okay, so you go to system. Uh, System 32 uh, folder, which contains the uh, the DLL and system folders. Uh, malware, a lot of malware. What they will do? They will go to those system uh, files and try to change them. Okay, try to change. They will keep the same name, but they will update them. They will make them infect them, basically. Okay. So uh, um, some uh, antivirus tools uh, using this behavioral uh, based technique will uh, start uh, watching those system files. Okay, and. Uh, I mean, detecting when they change. How, how we can, I think we discussed it. We didn't discuss this. Partially. Huh? Partially. So, basically here, uh, in order to um, know if one system file has changed, 
you need to hash them. Okay? So you start from a very clean version of the OS. You go to system files, you hash them, you put them in a array or some, some file or database. You store them. Okay? So you store the hashes of the clean version of the system files. Okay? Then, regularly, every um, once in a while, let's say every minute, every uh, 10 minutes, okay, you go to those same system files and redo all this process. Okay? Recompute the hashes okay, and compare them to the stored hashes. Okay? If they are the same, it means we are fine. Nobody changes them at all. Okay? If there is a difference, it means some, somebody, malware or user or whatever, changed one of these files. <coughs> You, uh, some of the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is thank you. If you update the system files, also the list of hash will, uh, will, will change. change. Okay. Yeah. Is the process of creating the hash does it take long? It is not many. Uh, it takes some time, but uh, uh, we are not here. You, you, you cannot compare it with password tracking, for example. Okay. Because password tracking, we have. Yeah, and a huge uh, amount of passwords you need to, to hash, but here it's uh, how many system files we have? System routines. I know in Windows uh, Windows uh, Seven, the number uh, I think Windows XP, uh, the number of uh, system calls like 400. Yeah, it's not that much. Yeah, in uh, Windows Seven, it uh, it went to uh, 700. You go to the system 32 folder and you see the, uh, the number of files in there. Not, uh, yeah, it's, let's say thousands. It's not, it's managed. Okay. Now, this is the uh, second uh, technique of antivirus. Basically, uh, the antivirus will be placed in key parts of the operating system, watching out the uh, behavior. If it notices some process doing uh, accessing some resource which is not which is not supposed to do, okay? Uh, it will raise the flag. It will uh, and it will keep watching that that uh, that process uh, uh, in more details, okay? Um, this is the second approach. The third approach. No? The third approach. It says the combination uh, packages. I think it's not mentioned here. But the third approach of antivirus technique, which is the most uh, uh, not efficient, but uh, uh, yeah, very advanced. It is not possible to do in all circumstances. Uh, it is basically it's called the uh, emulation-based antivirus. In emulation-based antivirus, basically you have a file, you have a, a, a suspicious file. You suspect that it is infected. What you do? You will execute it. You will execute it, but where? So, so you will have a kind of VM, the closed uh, box. Okay, black box, sandbox, sometimes we call it. Okay, sandbox. Okay, you execute that file in, or not execute, you emulate that file in that closed box. Okay, and you watch it how it behaves. Uh, because we saw last time that uh, one way of bypassing uh, antivirus, also in the demo earlier, is that to encode, encode the uh, the uh, the malware. Okay, when you encode, signature base will not work. Okay. Uh, and uh, here the only way to uh, make sure that the, uh, uh, or to tell if the file is malicious or not, is to execute it and observe what it does. Okay? Uh, so, emulation, this is the idea. Basically, you take the file, you uh, execute it in the sandbox, and of course, you need to uh, have a report on what exactly it did, what it accessed, what are the uh, yeah, and, uh, the key resource that says that's it. Okay, uh, it of course this is not uh, very efficient. You, you know, it's because every file you need to execute it in the emulation based. Uh, here, such kind of uh, uh, yeah, type of antiviruses they are used in uh, yeah, uh, uh, big networks where we have the resources to do that. Okay, you have several sandboxes running at the same time and the, uh, the things are, are aut automated, basically. Example of tools that uh, uh, allows uh, this emulation, uh, uh, GFI Langout. This is a tool, it's a commercial tool, okay? Exactly for that. Be because, you know, it is easy 
to prepare a VM and execute uh, a, suspe a suspicious file. Okay. But the difficult part is to generate the report. Okay. So to, uh, to have a report on the activities that malware did. Okay. And GFL and GAR, this is a tool that, is, that automates that. You have a sandbox, you execute the file, and it will tell you, it will return you uh, uh, a report on what exactly that malware did. Okay. Um, um, why is it difficult? You already run it and you watched it, so why is it difficult to do it? No, but, but you need to do it manually. Manually, you, manually you can, manually. But you need an automated tool to uh, watch out everything happening on the, uh, on the system. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, one way to uh, analyze uh, malware, it's called dynamic analysis. Dynamic malware analysis. Dynamic malware analysis, you take the malware, you execute it using the debuggers, etc. And then you have a report on what it did. The problem with malware uh, dynamic analysis okay, is that uh, the number of events when you execute a process, you execute a problem, you have no idea how many events are happening. Any system calls, if you execute Hello World, try to do it. You can, uh, there are, you know, no. Uh, available tools for, 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 uh, for observing what happens at any moment in an operating system, like, uh, uh, not the word, but there is, uh, not WinDBG, I forgot the name, I can, I can show you, but, you know, it, it, uh, it shows the number of system calls uh, being done yeah, from a certain process. Hello world. If you see just hello world, see, you write C, hello world, and then you execute. And you see how many events are running. Yeah, in terms of millions. Millions. Okay, yeah. So it's difficult to keep track of uh, what happened, what is normal, what is not normal, what is suspicious, what is not suspicious. The good thing with these commercial tools, you have a Langar, for example, they automate that. Okay, so they will identify, they will tell, they are able to tell this is not, uh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, so this is the, uh, uh, of course, and it's sometimes if you, you have a malware, you know it's a malware, but you cannot, you need to analyze it, but it is encrypted. Okay, so the first thing to do is to decrypt it, then you will be able to uh, reverse engineer it, etc. So one way to uh, bypass that is to execute it, let the, uh, the malware decrypt itself, and then, of course, it will load into memory. The plain version of the malware will load into the memory, and you can reverse engineer. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, generic decryption, this is a way to bypass the, uh, the encrypted malware by uh, letting them decrypt themselves. Okay? You know, for example, uh, uh, see, uh, again, all these lectures are you know, whole courses. I taught a course about malware analysis two years ago. And Shamoon malware, Shamoon, uh, which is uh, in Aramco. It is encrypted. It is encrypted, but very simple encryption. Okay? It is XOR, XOR encryption. Yeah. Uh, the XOR encryption, uh, we know it's XOR encryption, but we couldn't uh, identify where is the, uh, the key. Okay? You need the key to, uh, to decrypt. It is somewhere in the execute, but we couldn't figure out. Okay? So what we did, we uh, executed the, uh, we identified the loop, the decryption loop, then we put the breakpoint just after the decryption loop, before it started executing. Okay. Then we executed the malware, we waited and it, it, it decrypted the, itself, and then it generated a file, and then that file is the plain text version of the, uh, of the malware. We took that file and then we, we reverse engineered. Okay. Because if you apply reverse engineering on an encrypted file, you, have not, you will not find anything. Uh, yeah, now the last part, oh, okay, uh, social, uh, social engineering, everybody knows what's, uh, what's social engineering, right? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> uh, so it's the cracking techniques that rely on the weaknesses in people where rather than software. Okay. So uh, here we have a definition, and these are, you know, I'll, I'll go quickly, these are indicators of uh, uh, social engineering. Okay, so here, posing as a fellow employee, posing as an employee or a vendor, uh, sending a virus, sending a free software or patch to install. So these are uh, techniques used by uh, in social engineering uh, uh, tricks. 
uh, warning signs of an attack. If, for example, somebody uh, uh, send you something and uh, then you try to call him by phone, for example, refuse to give a callback number, okay, uh, out of ordinary request, claim of authority, uh, stress urgency, so it's very urgent, you need to do this, you need to do that, threatens negative consequences of non-compliance. When you see requests containing these kind of indicators, it, it's a warning sign of, uh, of uh, social engineering. Shows discomfort when questioned. Okay? So if you ask a question, it's uh, uncomfortable. Uh, name dropping, compliments of, or, or flattery. Yeah. Um, common targets of attacks. These are the targets of uh, social engineering attacks. In a way of uh, info value, so some people working in the organization which are not aware of the importance of the data they have. Okay, like receptions. Okay, they might have the data, but they don't know if it's sensitive or not. Okay, special privilege, uh, help desk technical support. They have most of the time the administrator uh, privilege on some uh, any accounts, etc. Uh, vendors, uh, specific depart departments like human resources, etc. Uh, factors making companies vulnerable: large number of employees, multiple facilities. Info employees were about uh, the training, lack of data classification. Uh, yeah, so you know, social engineering is not a technical uh, topic. Okay, so just to uh, to uh, have an idea. By the way, uh, Kali it has a tool to automate the uh, the uh, social engineering. You know, right? Okay, it's, it's called Set. Set. Uh, social engineering toolkit. Social engineering toolkit. But basically, what it allows to do, for example, it automates the uh, cloning, cloning of websites. You have Facebook, uh -huh. you need to clone the homepage, just give it Facebook, it will give you, it will yeah, emulate the interface and it will put it in your IP. Okay. So it, it, it simplifies, for example, you have a list of uh, uh, emails and you need to uh, yeah, broadcast certain messages. So it automates the social engineering uh, step. Huh? Set, set, S-E-T, social engineering toolkit.